Thanks for staying with us. Well, we have one of the cabinet members of the Lagos State Governor, uh, special advisor to the Lagos State Governor on innovation and technology, Mr. Tubosun Alaki. He'll be speaking to us on how Lagosians can be part of and also be beneficiaries of the largest technology conference in Nigeria. Welcome, sir, to the show. Thank you. Good Thanks to have you. Yep. So we saw that you're planning um, an art of, of technology Lagos, it's supposed to be the oh. largest <coughs> Um, tech conference happening in Nigeria. Tell us about this conference. So the Art of Technology Lagos is uh, an event in a series of events we've been having over the past uh, okay. four years, actually, or three years, actually. Um, the first Art of Technology Lagos was sort of like a bridge between the government and the technology ecosystem. Okay. So in trying to design an innovation and technology master plan for Lagos, it was important that we uh, converse and engage with the ecosystem right. to try and dimension a plan that is industry standard and that was relevant uh, for the ecosystem to grow. So the Art of Technology is a series of engagement points. It's a platform of engagement between uh, civic authorities and the private sector technology ecosystem because it's only in that engagement that you can build really fit for, for purpose plans, right. right, for Lagos. And so that's, that's really what Art of Technology is okay. about. Okay, so just um, paint a picture for me. What is it? Is it like a trade fair? Do you have people come and just lay out their wares and then government is there? How does, what so, is it exactly? So number one, it's a series of conversations, right? It's one of the only uh, conferences um, say a, a startup builder or an entrepreneur can sit next to a government official, okay. right? And there are conversations, right? There are panel sessions, there are plenary sessions, and then there are usually exhibitions as well. Some startups come, they have some new technology to showcase, mm -hmm. they have the opportunity to network uh, with other startups and with potential customers, you know, and things like that. So. Think of it as an exchange point right. mm -hmm. for the ecosystem, mm -hmm. and, and that's really what it's about. So um, I know about CES. Yeah, um, correct. And it, when you were talking, I, yeah. it was just sort of like right. seem very similar to what they're trying to do with CES. Mm -hmm. But many many people always feel we, they approach um, government-related platforms like this with right. talk shop. We're just trying to mm -hmm. make noise, mm -hmm. and nothing really would probably come out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you address people like that who are looking at another government event? I'm not interested. What okay. exactly? Why should they come? Right. So if you look at CES that you mentioned, this is a consumer electronic show, mm -hmm. uh, mostly uh, consumers and commercial. Mm -hmm. For arts of technology, it's slightly different. And, and you, are, you, are, you are kind of on the money when you say people say it's a talk shop. But let me walk you through some of the achievements and mm -hmm. why this is very important. For the first AOT 1.0, it was the first time that an Office of Innovation and Technology was set up okay. to really focus on innovation and the nascent uh, startup ecosystem that was growing. So it was like, look, how could we turbocharge this ecosystem for growth? And okay. so this exchange point was formulated to actually talk to people on the ground okay. and not assume to make policies in the air mm. and, and, and not be you know, where things are really happening. So the first AOT was when we dimensioned, out of that first AOT came the first Lagos State Innovation and Technology Master Plan, okay. right? That's that has four major pillars, right? In fact, over the past two years, we've increased it to seven major pillars. So the pillars were data access, infrastructure, talent, funding, uh, communication and advocacy, diversity and inclusion, and policy, right? So these were the pillars um, that we identified that if we were able to um, really formulate certain policies and initiatives within these pillars, yes, there will be changes within the ecosystem, right? right? Yeah. So, so I, I see that because I want us to bring the conversation home because yeah. it was yeah. important for me that the viewers understand what we're talking about here. Yeah. So these pillars eventually should deliver a smarter Lagos. E e eventually, yes. Eventually. Now, when Nigerians hear smarter Lagos, they're thinking yeah. mm -hmm. ah, there's poverty in the land, mm -hmm. there's, <laughs> there's no infrastructure. How do you start looking for a smarter Lagos amongst this poverty-stricken community where we see? Mm -hmm. um, how does that work? Because okay. that's the fundamental questions Nigerians are asking. Great. Is it too far-fetched? 
this matter Lagos vision, or do you think we're putting the cart before the horse? Uh, absolutely not, uh, because in trying to drive or reduce or alleviate poverty, mm. you need to apply technology. Good. I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, Lagos State is a city that the population keeps increasing. There are estimates, whichever one you look at, um, whether about five to eight people migrate into Lagos an hour. Now, for you to be able to cater to an ever-growing population with a static piece of land, you need to manage resources better. The only way you can manage resources is to apply technology frameworks. I'll give you an example, identification, right? If you want to keep up with the growing pace of population, you've got to be able to identify everybody within your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. That is going to um, take the application of databases, for instance. You need to build massive databases with certain feature sets that would enable you to be able to identify people. Yeah. For instance, if we want to build health insurance, health insurance is a tenet of poverty alleviation mm -hmm. because if people are able to get health insurance, yeah. then their health, wealth will be better. They are able to go to work, be productive. And for you, for them to be able to get health insurance, you've got to be able to identify them as bona fide um, citizens of Lagos. Yes. That will require the implementation of a robust database, right? And that database has to be able to be tied to different services, whether it's health insurance, benefit plans. Well, let plans. me pause you for a second because we have okay. an NIN. And we people are confused at the federal level. Correct. So I'm going to federal to register. Yeah. Lagos is also asking to register. Can't yeah. you, is there any way you can both you and federal can merge to get the data from because they're saying that about 10.5 million Nigerians now have NIN, confirmed right. from NIMC. Right. So how are you merging that data? Are you still going to go through another round of data? So, so NIN yeah. is saying they have about 80 something million Nigerians. Um, yeah, correct. So they, yeah, I'm not telling me only Lagos is about 10.5. I read it in the papers today, 10.5 Lagos, but go ahead. Right. So Lagos, our population mm -hmm. is actually around 20, yeah. well, between 20, half. 22 million, yeah. right. right? And you, part of, we are talking to NIN actually, yeah. that's NIMSI, yeah. the agency in charge of the NIN number. Mm -hmm. But for Lagos State's own development, we need to collect more unique data points, okay. right? Because Lagos State is different from Zamfara, yeah. or it's different from Cross River. Right. Right, so the kinds of things we need for our own development require the implementation of our own database. Okay. It's the same thing in the US. Uh, okay. If you go to the US, um, the, you have a New York state ID mm. or a New York driver's license. Mm. It's different from a Pennsylvania driver's license. Mm. They use those data points to plan their economy because yes. of the way they are structured. Right. And we are structured similarly. So it's important that Lagos State also collect its own how, data. How do you want to convince people that mm -hmm. all this data that you want to collect is mm -hmm. not so that you just come and hit us where it hurts. With my abilities. Taxes. So, taxes. so taxes with this, with that, you know, a lot of people, nobody's going to want to hear. Uh -huh. And then the second question is how long will all this take? So uh, we have started actually. So today we have um, an agency called the Lagos States Residence Registration Agency, mm -hmm. right? Has already implemented um, a robust database and collection has been ingoing. In fact, so far, we have approximately 6 million Lagosians within the database. I'm not there. Lastra, <laughs> I have my last I'm there. I'm I'm last right. What's Lastra? Yeah. The Lagos uh, no the Residence <laughs> Registration <laughs> Agency. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is the agency that is tasked with identifying <laughs> Lagosians. <laughs> right? It's important for state planning, for resource management. Right. For instance, we want, if we want to build more hospitals, for instance, in whether it's a limb or show, how many people are there, right? What is the uh, comorbidity uh, makeup mm -hmm. of that area? So that enables adequate resource deployment to those areas. So it's important that each state, right, whether in, whether in collaboration with NIMSI or if they are able to implement their own robust databases, it's important that they if do If I have so. my tax card, okay. I need to go and do last right. So all of this, because, because the tax card deals with just your taxes, your tax benefits, or your, your tax profile, yeah. right? There are other parts of the economy that you need to be involved in, right? That your tax number might not be able uh, to accommodate. Okay. And that's why LASRA is important. But nevertheless, there are databases that will be tied together. 
right? So there is a consistency in your identification and there is no duplication of records or things like that. So it's, uh, it's very important that we actually collect that data and are able to plan ahead for the next 30 years. If you notice of, um, in uh, Enigbeti, we released the 30-year development plan, 2022 to 2052. If we want to say Lagos should become a human-centric city, you cannot achieve that without adequate data point collection. Mm. Very, very important. Mm. Let me run a quick break. When we come back and continue our conversation, stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks. We're still speaking to the special advisor to the Lagos State Governor on Innovation and Technology, Mr. Tumbo Salaki. You had a question, Maria. Yes. Go ahead. So before my question, I think for me, the concern will be after going through the stress Many Nigerians have gone through the stress of getting the NIN number. It wasn't just stopping to get it, you know. We saw the long queues. We hope that it will not require such stress, you know, to give data to the Lagos State government when they need it. Um, so my question is, this is the AOT 4.0, right? So um, I would like to know what milestones you've achieved from the first one um, to now to show that you're making progress and what we can look out to point and say, okay, it looks like they're making progress and they're headed where they want to. Right. So... Um the, the first AOT 1.0, like I had mentioned earlier, launched the Innovation and Technology Master Plan, uh, under which uh, the pillars I mentioned had specific initiatives to be able to drive uh, digital inclusion, internet penetration, uh, smart city implementation models across different sectors. So if we look at uh, that trajectory from 2019, which was the first one till now, uh, some of our achievements have been we've um, been able to deploy over 2,900 kilometers of fiber optic cable. Those across, colored ones? Yes, the, okay. some of those multicolored ones that you see. Um, apart from uh, uh, connecting government buildings, uh, public schools, we've connected about 100 public schools. Uh, we are connecting general hospitals. What uh, does that mean? That. that means that the schools, the kids yeah. can use Wi-Fi. Yes, yeah, so, so what that means is that um, there is um, an aid to the teaching element, right? right? Yeah. Uh, and so, and hospital. yes, so, so distance learning becomes possible. Okay. So if you are not able to come to class, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, the school has enough robust capacity to be able to do distance learning. And also even supplementing the curriculum, data and information to aid teachers, right? To be able to teach better. That is also available because of this technology. For, for government institutions being connected to this fiber, um, e-government is now possible. Mm -hmm. Certain um, government institutions that didn't have internet connection before, okay. once they are connected to a fiber optic network, then they can implement ERP systems, enterprise resource mm -hmm. planning systems, that would enable them to offer online services to citizens. Mm. Part of why that has not been possible mm. was the lack of infrastructure. I can say something earlier. Mm -hmm. How long? So are, are they, are they started? Because Nigeria oh. wants to know, have you started already or is coming to start? In fact, we're almost finished. Mm. Okay, so we're almost finished me, with the first phase. When you say we're almost finished, you mean yeah. that in a very short while, yeah. hospitals can have data. I can yeah. access it. Schools can be connected, can be connected to data. Schools, to public schools can be connected to data to aid teaching. Yeah. And also government agencies can be connected. They won't say they don't, there's no internet. They can know that, okay, how is it, you know, they, they want to go and do uh, for information. They can get it from another ministry. Correct. That's what you're saying. In fact, today, um, we've connected um, a, a, the campus in Alausa okay. has a robust um, Wi-Fi connection, okay. right, across many of the agency buildings. So some of them, uh, some, a lot of our agencies mm. within the Alausa campus actually right. have internet today. Yeah. Of course, that also mm. works when there's electricity. So mm. power okay, is another thing that needs to be available. So mm. like I said, 2,900 kilometers of so fiber optic far. cable have been laid. Mm -hmm. This was from our first AOT, mm -hmm. we had zero, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Was it only VI was laid? No, 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 no. You didn't Absolutely see that. Because, because people used to absolutely. say at that time, it's those colors, those colors. Yes. 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 Uh, people were saying it was a... Um, 5G. What was that thing? Eh? That thing was supposed to take away. No, uh, it's supposed to be 5G, so. but people were saying it was one funny thing mm, like this. Raptor. That was what... Not <laughs> 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 COVID and all that, but... The, these cables, I yeah. thought it was for 5G, so it's not for 5G. No, no, no. So in, 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 the, in the telecommunication sector, there are different technologies that enable you to be connected to the internet. The ones we are doing are physical cables <laughs> that are laid maybe 
the, those cables get pulled into your house, to your home, office, mm. uh, school, whatever. 5G is wireless technology, mm. right? And so when you make a phone call, right, if you are on a 5G network, mm. the signal goes to a wireless base station. You know those towers, yeah. right? They have uh, base stations there. Mm. They connect to those uh, base stations that have 5G equipment there and mm. connects you, right, either to the uh, uh, HQ or wherever their head-end equipment is, and then that also now connects you to the customer you are calling. So that's a wireless <laughs> spectrum yeah. so those, technology. Th th this other one is for the house. Is, uh, yes. These ones are physical cables, right, mm -hmm. that go into uh, structures, physical structures. Like houses. Okay, so right. we have time running out. So connection, connect, um, connectivity is huge. And yes. It's, it's a plus, you know. Mm -hmm. um, however, another key part of your, what your portfolio is, mm -hmm. is innovation. Right. And many times, we've, people have turned startups and innovation to a money-making scheme, come up with an idea, make mm -hmm. a lot of noise, mm -hmm. do valuation, yeah. make the money, and then the company folds up. Mm. And the mm -hmm. money has gone. So what are the key innovations that in the past four years mm -hmm. you, you, can, you are celebrating that we, we supported this innovation and it has right. delivered this value to the people? So, so uh, w one of the things that came out of the first AOT 1.0 Right, and is under our funding pillar, mm. was the Lagos State Science Research and Innovation Council. Mm. Right, that council is made up of public and private sector individuals okay. that were tasked with funding and resourcing innovative startups in Lagos. And so from uh, 2020 mm. to now, the space of about 24 months, we've supported over 60 startups, okay. right, innovative startups in uh, fintech, construction tech, agri-tech, health tech, <laughs> yes. So um, we've been able to support them. At least when we started supporting them, it was around $12,000 each. It were grants, mm. right, to these startups. These um, grants enabled some of these startups that were innovating. <laughs> They gave them their initial runway. Some of these startups have actually raised more money in the private markets. Oh, okay. So we, for instance, there is a startup that was using... Um, technology and data to help farmers improve their crop yields. Okay. So it was a data platform that would tell farmers, okay, this is the correct season to plant. This oh. is the type of seeds that you should use. Mm. This is information on the market for your harvest and things like that. So that, right. that was one of the first startups we found. We need to wrap up, but I need mm. you just to finally tell us the dates, the time, because is this yeah. for... Is this for every Boguero or just specific people in the <laughs> ecosystem? So, so it's it's mostly targeted at the ecosystem, okay. but people that have an interest in technology can also, can also come. Date, time, venue. So the date is um, December 8th and 9th. That's okay. Thursday That's and fair. Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, and it starts at 10 a.m. Where? Um, at Landmark Event Center. Okay. So if you are not able to make it to the physical uh, spot, we'll be streaming online. Right, we have some attendees who have registered who are not able to make it, and they'll be they'll be watching it online. So we'll provide all of the information. Uh, you can go to www.aotlagos.com to register, and um, yeah, and uh, it's cool. We've we, we spoken to quite a number of um, Governor Samuel Lu's um, cabinet members, and you all seem so pretty, really smart. Oh, we just hope that we, we don't we don't like the talk, we like the act, the, the the action, and we've seen Which that in Lagos. See. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that in Lagos. So it's really yeah. good to see yeah. you guys working yeah, so hard. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah, governor those, has a good team. Those, those <laughs> uh, wires, we saw them. At the end, it's just wires. It's just wires. You know, that's all we can take on this. Thank you very much. We're going to break. We come back. We come to the next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back.